Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kryptonize. Today, joining me is Michael Michalis, and I think I pronounced that correctly. No, We're going to talk about how to launch a token on the blockchain, blockchain security, and scams. And you all know how I think about scams. We like to call them out when we see it, or at least suggest it. Sometimes you really don't know. So, uh, Michael, before we kick things off, can you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Of course, and uh, thank you, Mark, for having me. Um, my name is Michael Michelis. I nailed the last name. Uh, so my background has been in um, data engineering. Uh, I used to build big data solutions for companies like PNG and GM, and then I always wanted to go into entrepreneurship. Um, so I started um, a fashion tech uh, company, then I started an e-commerce company, sold that one, and now I'm the CEO of Cyberscope, which is a cybersecurity company in the blockchain space, uh, specializing in smart contract audits, which is our topic today. Okay. Yes, excellent. And we will get that. First, though, how do you successfully launch a token to the blockchain? I know that's a big ask of you to, to, to kind of squeeze down into just a few paragraphs, but tell us how you launch a, uh, successfully launch a token into the blockchain. Um, yeah, that is, a, that is a big question and we can talk about this, uh, I guess, for hours. But if I had to uh, summarize down, um, you know, uh, first you have to wonder how you can uh, create a token. Uh, and there are two ways like, nowadays to create a token. Uh, if you're skilled with uh, programming languages like uh, Solidity, which is what uh, Ethereum-based tokens are written into, you can just uh, program your own smart contracts and uh, launch your token in your desired uh, blockchain, that being either Ethereum, um, Binance Smart Chain, or any other of the chains that exist. That's the one way uh, if you're uh, skilled enough to run your own code, or you can use some platforms that uh, have made it easy uh, today, some no-code platforms. Some popular ones are Coin2, Pinksell, uh, Coinscope, that allow you to just click a few buttons, pay the fee of deploying the smart contract, uh, specialize, uh, you know, what is your total supply, how many tokens, what is your name of your token, and there are no code tools that can make it easy for you. Now, that's the easy part, creating the token, but as you said, successfully launching a token uh, might take different dimensions. Um, what we found in the industry that works is uh, people that are very skilled with marketing and creating a concept that uh, the audience will love and investor will love, basically. Uh, so you need good marketing with your token. You need to build strong communities. It is basically like launching a business, right? You can launch a business um, and no one will come. Or you can launch a business with a verified idea. Go talk to you know, what kind of marketing is effective uh, and questions like that. But, you know, we can we can elaborate on that if you want. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. What's building community, I agree, is is probably the number one thing you should be doing in terms of putting a token successfully on the blockchain and, and, and watching it grow and, and be successful. What are some other marketing tactics that you recommend people do? Yeah. So um, right now, uh, when uh, people are creating the token, they're usually uh, addressing to some platforms called launchpads. Now, uh, launchpads are platforms that already have like a very loyal base of investors that are looking which new projects are coming out. Um, so we recommend that if someone wants to launch a new token, uh, they should look at these launchpad platforms. Uh, there are quite a, a few big ones out there, depending on what kind of token you want to launch or even an NFT, there are like NFT uh, launchpads as well. The, the tactics are similar, but obviously, you know, there are uh, differences. Um, so uh, picking a good launchpad would be the first step in creating uh, and launching a token. The next thing would be to uh, start thinking how you're gonna start building a community. That would be different depending on the token that you are creating. Um, now we've seen even some meme tokens um, taking uh, being successful. But if you're launching a, a utility token, you probably need to address to the people that you're solving the problem. Uh, for example, you know, if you're building a token uh, for um, freelancers that you want to exchange some uh, services, uh, it would be good to address to businesses that are looking freelancers, things like that. That's a simple example. Uh, now, once you have identified your audience, you have found the, the launch, but to help you get the initial traction, then you need to start thinking on your next steps, how you can start building the trust in your community because there are thousands of tokens launching every day. Uh, some are uh, 
with good intentions, some are with bad intentions. Um, we'll touch upon scams in a few minutes, I guess. But um, investors are definitely aware that, you know, something new is out there. I don't know who is building it, uh, what are the intentions of the people behind it. So they'll start asking questions. And a good way to answer these questions would be, you know, to do AMAs with your community, to be out there, maybe even uh, dox yourself, as we say. So put your uh, face and name out there so people know who you are. Uh, in case, you know, something bad happens, they have this uh, assurance that this person is there and, you know, we can even pursue legal action if they try and um, do something uh, dodgy. Yeah. And so before before we get to that, what are some of the launch pads that you like? So um, as, a, as a smart contract uh, firm, we're working with quite a few launch pads. Uh, right now, the, the biggest one that we work with is Pink Sale. Um, they specialize in Binance Smart Chain, but they do also support Ethereum and other networks like Dot Chain, which is quite new. Uh, Unicrypt is another big one that we uh, work closely with. Um, DXL is another one that is popular. Uh, in terms of traffic and features, right now, number one is um, Pink Cell from uh, what we've seen. Okay, excellent. All right, well. That's a good start overview. Obviously, there's a lot yeah. more to what he just said. Those are just like the overarching uh, things that you got to do, almost strategy, not tactics. But uh, ultimately, you got to have tactics to to uh, to reach your goals, especially when launching a, a token. So let's move to um, let's go to scams, and then we'll end with blockchain security. Um, so scams. That's um, that's a big thing. I mean. Uh... Well, how do you how do you find how do you know if something's a scam? Usually, um, a scam. If I were to define it, and you know, I'm, I wasn't prepared to define scam, it's a broad term. Uh, <laughs> well, I can help okay. you. Uh, it's somebody that intentionally, <laughs> somebody or a group of people that intentionally are creating a Ponzi scheme or just out to defraud you. Uh, and we've all seen these things happen. Now, unintentionally, I don't think it's a scam. I think it's just a bad project. But and there's a fine line between them, I understand. But that's how I would define it. Uh, but how do you recognize it? That's the question. I think you're uh, spot on on the definition. Now, um, if we were to say some warning signs that uh, a project is a scam, a scam that we've seen, is that um, first uh, they don't want to um, audit their smart contract. And for those that are not aware with the term, a uh, smart contract audit is when uh, we take a smart contract, we evaluate all the vulnerabilities or the exploits that can be done either from a third party or even the owner. So if you're looking at the audit over project and all the big projects have a smart contract audit, uh, you will see that the, uh, the vulnerabilities are clearly identified um, in, the, in the audit report. So if they don't get a report, that's a warning sign. Another one that uh, we've recently seen, uh, as I said, people hide behind anonymity. And I understand that some people don't want to put their faces out there. Um, there you know, something might go wrong because they didn't want to. Uh, but uh, there are companies that, like ours that can work with a project owner and say, okay, we know your identity. And if we identify you scammed your investors, will give investors the opportunity to pursue legal action against you. That's called the uh, uh, KYC or know your customer. Uh, people are used to it when they're uh, signing up on exchanges, but we also do it on a project level. So you want to launch a token mark, you come to us and say, you know, I don't want people to know that it's me, but um, you keep my identity safe. I'll do my best and we'll work together to make sure that your identity is uh, hidden. Uh, all the investors know that um, we have your identity and we'll pursue legal action if uh, you try anything dodgy. Uh, but that's another good sign that the project has good intentions um, and is looking to pursue this longer term. Yeah, I, I like I like that one, assuming you guys are the good guys, and I believe you are. I wouldn't have you on the show. <laughs> uh, but what if what if the U.S. government came to you and said, tell us who these people are? They're, they're not accusing them of scams. They're just accusing them of violating some U.S. vague law that you know, they haven't defined yet in crypto space. Um, so um, interestingly enough, we've even worked with the FBI on some cases. And uh, if we have information... But those are on scams. What if, it's, what if it's some bullshit regulation or interpretation of a regulation from the SEC and they come to you and say, well, we think uh, Tornado Cash is a scam. 
uh, will you give us their information? Now, for me, I'd be like, well, no, it's not defined anywhere. I don't believe it's a scam. I mean, people are using it for scams, but uh, that it's not inherently a scam. So what would you do in that situation? Um, we have um, uh, the obligation to our clients to protect their identity. Now, if a judge issues a warrant, in this case, I don't think there's much we can do. Uh, but Well, are you in the United States? Are you based in the United States? No, uh, we're not based in the United States. Well, then why would, you, why would you listen? If you felt you were on the right side of the law, why would you listen to a U.S. warrant if you're not based in the U.S.? That, that, is, a good, no jurisdiction. that is a good point. And I don't know if I have uh, enough legal knowledge to say that, you know, if we can just go. All right. <laughs> I do. They have no, they have no authority. Well, that's good to oh, know. We can, we can move on. Yeah. I mean, people watching this are like, okay, this is great. But if some U.S., you know, authority says, oh, we think, you know, you're breaking the law here in the United States. Let's go subpoena the, the people that are protecting their identity. Uh, and they did nothing wrong because the U.S. code is not defined here. Um, you know, they want to know whether they're, they're going to be protected or not. So, uh, I'll let people just, you know, listen to your answers and, and, uh, decide for themselves. Okay. Uh, let's continue with the, with identifying a scam. Uh, and then what we'll get into what we could do and you do to protect them. Um, yeah. And another maybe borderline scam that we have seen is, uh, a lot of new tokens are launching an idea. Uh, meme tokens do that a lot. Uh, you know, because it's a newly launched token, it gets the initial attention and then they quietly abandon the project. Uh, we call this sometimes like a soft uh, rug pull in the industry, which means that they abandon the project. They just put it out there to make some quick cash and then try try this again. We've seen some repeat actors doing that. Um, so I would definitely, um, as an investor, would be very wary of investing in a project that doesn't have like a, a roadmap, a long term utility that you can see actually solves a real world problem and it's not there to just make you some quick bucks. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really happy to hear that. So you guys do the audit or do you work with like a consensus to do the audit? We do the audit. We are, uh, we have, uh, engineers that are certified auditors and do the audit. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. All right. So you check for rug pulls, you check probably the people that are associated with the project. And so do you certify it or you get behind it? What, what is it that you offer protection wise? So we do offer a certificate. Um, as I said, we offer two services. One is the smart contract uh, code and the other is the KYC for project owners. Uh, again, both uh, aimed at increasing the trust of investors. Um, and at the end, uh, you have a certificate. Uh, we are one of the top auditors. We work with all the launch pads. So if you show our certificate, they know that you know this project has actually worked with we work with a reputable company, and um, they usually uh, add like a badge of this project has been audited or this project has been KYC'd, which investors are looking for these signs before investing in a project. Okay, yeah, they are, and they should be. If you're watching this, always look for for some sort of certificate from a a well known auditor or you know a company like Consensus that looks at the smart contract and tells you if there's any potential for rug pulls or, or scams. So is there uh, the blockchain part of your security that we talked about? What is it that you're doing to protect? Is it the blockchain or is it the founders or is it the investors at all three? Eventually, I'd say uh, we aim for all three. Uh, obviously, sometimes uh, you have to, to prioritize some against the others. Um, an example could be that, you know, some contract might have some functions that could be exploited by the founders, but they do serve a business logic. Um, like um, PancakeSwap, for example, is an inflationary token that uh, means new tokens. Now, if the founder means a billion tokens or a gazillion tokens, for example, they might drop the, uh, the actual value of the investor tokens. Now, um, as an auditor, we have to flag this in our report. And uh, for investors, they need to judge themselves that, you know, I trust this, um, this project that there is a sound business logic behind it, but it could be exploited as we've seen in cases that there were the warning signs, but people just blindly trusted an audit. So we urge investors to read carefully the audits, uh, talk with the actual owners to 
get answers on why specific functions are there, what is the business logic behind these functions, which, as I said, there might be a very sound business logic behind um, a, a function, and then judge for themselves if they want to take that risk or not. Uh, because with every investment, you're taking a risk. Uh, obviously, some people have bigger appetite for risks. Some people have smaller appetite for risks. But we make sure that everything is laid down uh, for them there. Okay, good. And with that, I do need to know where people can find you, your website, any way of, of reaching out and connecting with you. Um, so um, I'm uh, my LinkedIn profile is on our website, which is uh, www.cyberscope.io. Uh, we're um, we're uh, all, all, all the team is doxed, so you can find uh, us there. So in case anything goes wrong, you can go after us, and um, we. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, doxed yourself <laughs> exactly. Then what about uh, reaching out to you specifically? Uh, do you have a Twitter handle? Do you have uh... Discord, Telegram. Yeah, I'm on Twitter, um, underscore uh, Michelis, which is my last name, underscore. Uh, so it's M-I-C-H-E-L-I-S. Excellent. All right. With that, thank you very much. And uh, really valuable content here, folks. I mean, if you're looking to invest or you're looking for a true solution because you're a good company pro providing value to the crypto and blockchain communities, then uh, these are good guys to hook up with. Thank you, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Fidelman with Smart Blocks. I'm giving you my tip of the week. This is the crypto tip of the week. It's called TetraGuard. You can see it right here. This is the world's first decentralized crypto ETF, which has Bitcoin, PaxG, Ethereum, and this fee token called Quadrant. You want to learn more about it? Go to tetraguard.io. This is a big buy for you right now.